Valencia Giles started her music school in 2009 during a recession. She was told her music school would never work. 10 years later, it grossed over $1 million in 13 months. She is breaking her silence and telling her story for the first time. I was a happy going kid. So as a kid, nobody really knew that I was struggling inside. And my mom, she was a teacher, but she also just struggled physically a lot. She was sick a lot. She suffered with depression and different things like that. She had several breakdowns, mm -hmm. emotional breakdowns. And I remember they let ambulance come into the house and I'm like eight years old. I remember that happening mm -hmm. often. Mm -hmm. And I remember, even though I was the youngest, that I had to take care of her a lot. Mm -hmm. And so I'm even thinking, it makes me cry. Yeah. Because I had That's to take real. care of her a lot. Music was a place for me hmm. where I could just express how I felt. Mm -hmm. So if I was happy, I played happy music. Mm -hmm. And if I was sad or if I was struggling, I may go in and play something with magnitude and a lot of effort and loud. It just, I used music to help me cope. It was band. band I was okay. a band director. And I did not do a great job. I mean, the kids locked me up in the band room. I was terrible. I mean, I was as young as the kids, looked like a kid. I just decided then I'm never going to do music again. Hmm. This is awful. I've wasted five years and I'm a terrible teacher. It proved to me that I wasn't good you enough. Measure up and I didn't measure up. And I graduated from there and got a job in computer science. Ozzy and I got married, mm -hmm. and two years later, we had a family. We had my son, Jonathan. Eventually, we moved to Georgia. By the time we got to Georgia, of course, I had left music then. And I was a part of a church, and I met this lady in a church who owned a music company. Okay. And she said, Valencia, why don't you come and teach for me? Wrong question to ask me. <laughs> I'm like, teach for you? No way. I mean, it's because, you know, I'm not really good at that. Because that triggered all the, yes, all the, I'm like, all the stuff, all the fear. Yes, I'm yeah. like, I'm not really good at And then besides, I didn't think I was a great teacher still. And so I did. I went to several schools. Where I taught toddlers and five-year-olds and four-year-olds. And I just the light bulb came on. I loved it. And I saw things in myself that I could do with kids and how kids just loved me when I would come to the school. Mm -hmm. And that was, and I got this, you can do this. It was life-giving. Yeah, you're good at this. Mm -hmm. You're gifted at this. And then one day at one school, I got sick and could not go to work. And when it was time for me to go back, my boss called me and she said, they don't want you back. Oh no. So they said they wanted to keep the sub and guess what happened? All of a sudden that, that old fear came, comes back. I can't All of a sudden up. I'm not good enough. I'm, um, I wept and I cried. By the time I got off the floor, finally I got to a place where I was clear minded eventually. And it was at that point I decided, you know what? I'm going to work for myself. Um, I remember driving my kids around with some flyers and putting the flyers on mailboxes and inviting people to come to my house for music lessons. So we started with one student, two students, three students. And it all started right there in your home. It all started right there in my house. Wow. And then it came back to me. You can do this. You are a great teacher. I never had in my mind to grow a music school or have any kind of music school. So, so, so that's never in your thinking? It's never in my thinking. And my thinking at that time was, one, I need to do what I love because my kids were the most important to me. Mm -hmm. And I wanted them to have me around. And two, I wanted to support uh, my household financially. Gotcha. 
And that was the best way I could do it. And the third thing that came out of it was I realized the gift I had and how I was helping the kids that were in my home. Fast forward, years go by, my mother has a stroke. But when my mom had the stroke, we had to move her into the house. So when she moved into the house, that's when Ozzy said, this is just not conducive, it's not working. So you need to move the school outside of the house. Oh, I got you. So it's actually your mom coming to live with you, sort of forced yes. the beginning of what would become mm -hmm. the music school. And so we did, We, and that was in 2009, uh -huh. right in the middle of a recession. And people were saying, don't do that. It's not going to work. Don't you realize people don't have jobs? Why are you opening up a school? But we did it anyway. And asked me, did we have a lot of money? No, we did not. Mm -hmm. Because this Joel's family, they're amazing in mm -hmm. many, many ways. They surround us with the love, support, and respect, and that makes us really give our all to deserve that. We really deserve that. Yeah. Without even knowing us, this is how they treat before we open up. Right. Mm -hmm. And all the kids, all the students, mm -hmm. they all feel that way. After school, like going to BC Giles every day, or like, you know, every once a week, and I would go there and sometimes I'd be sad about something about school or stressed out about something and I remember being a bit younger and being with Miss Giles and she would just tell me all of these life lessons and things that I could just keep with me and apply to my life and she just always taught me to work hard and always to put my all into my music and make sure that I'm feeling the music and at first I thought it was just Techni technical and just playing the, the notes, but it's really about feeling the music and learning the dynamics. And dynamics are not just the lines or like the, the symbols on the page, it's more like the storytelling of the music. It helps me understand the meaning behind the music. I'm just really grateful to be at this school for as long as I've been. What I love about teaching is working with kids. I love kids. I love kids of all ages. I even love adults. I love, you know, adult learners, you know, anybody who wants help. I'm always there, you know, and I just want to help them learn and help them enjoy their music and enjoy music being a part of their life as much as I enjoy having music as a part of my life. I want every kid to realize that they are special. Mm -hmm. huh. It's okay, take a minute. You feel it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That they are special before they ever do anything. Mm -hmm. that, that is what makes them special. Yeah. Because we tend to think it is in what we do that makes us special yeah. or makes us su significant. But to me, for a child to believe in themselves because they know that they are wonderfully made and that they don't have to do anything to know that they're special, 
that's what is important to me. Perfection is not without mistakes. Mm. Perfection is just when you do your very best here. So powerful. You know? That they're special beyond what they do. Yeah. They're special even beyond the music, that they're special. Yes. So powerful. Beyond the music. And serving people and giving to people and sharing with people. And I know the struggles that I had, especially with the confidence thing. I know that I would go in my room and play the piano and be amazing and go on stage and play the piano and be terrible. I knew what that felt like. And so I wanted to be a person that was able to perceive and give kids a full picture of what music is about.